Good evening and welcome to News 360 from the News Up here at the Sunway in Accra. I am Issa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Coming up the headlines. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil. Deluxe Acrylic Paint. And Napa Foods. My Life Insurance. In airlines, personnel at Kofodia Central Police Station being tested for COVID-19 after station officer dies from virus. Fourteen persons arrested at Spando Ziavi in the Volta region for their alleged affiliation to C-sectionist group Homeland Study Group Foundation to be arraigned. Eight bodies retrieved after Thursday boat disaster near Donkokum in a front plains north district of Eastern Region. On entertainment tonight, eight-year-old historian Gabriel Apia, popularly known as Nana AK, a judged talented kid season 11 winner. An international news lawyer for the family of George Floyd, whose death has sparked unrest across the U.S., accused a police officer of premeditated murder. Details of these stories and more coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And beginning the news tonight, a 55-year-old chief inspector at the Central Police Station in Kofodia has died of COVID-19. His test results were confirmed after his death. Samples from, from personnel at the station are currently being taken. The chief inspector died on May 29, 2020, after a short illness. Samples taken for testing after his death confirmed COVID-19 positive. Deputy Public Health Director of the Kofridua Central Hospital and a team from the Disease Control broke the news to personnel at the station. The deceased had visited three health facilities. Samples of health personnel have been taken and are currently under self-quarantine. Police personnel at the Central Police Station would have their samples taken. The New Joabin South Municipality confirmed three COVID-19 cases on May 22. And joining us on phone now is the Deputy Eastern Regional Police PRO, Sergeant Francis Gomado. Good evening, sir, and thank you for your time on News 360. All right, this news is really unsettling, but tell us more. How many police officers have had their samples taken so far? Okay, so far, after the death of the chief inspector, uh, we thought it wise to actually do some contact tracing as well as um, a testing of our personnel and those who might probably came or come into contact with him during the course of his duty. So we arranged with the, the uh, Kofodia uh, Regional Hospital team, led by Dr. Abu Amel and his team. And as of 8 o'clock this morning, they were at the Central Police Station to actually take samples of uh, police personnel, as well as their wives and dependents. Uh, we have police assistants and inmates as well. Right, and so, I can tell you that by the close of day, they've taken sample of 244 uh, persons. 22 of them are inmates who are in store. And that's what we have come so far, how far we have come. All right, so, so when will the exercise end? Well, you know, the regional command want to have all personnel tested. So as we speak, the regional command is making arrangements for even those at other police installations, uh, including the regional police headquarters and other police stations within the municipality to be tested. So we are actually on course and in the next few days we'll be having those things done. So um, what is going to happen there? 
Would the station be closed down for fumigation to take place and for the test to be carried out or you are still operating as usual? Actually, fumigation and disinfection was even done previously, some few days ago. You know, as we speak currently, the Zoom Lion is carrying out a disinfection exercise across the eastern region, where all police installations, including police uh, barracks and police force, will all be disinfected. And that one is ongoing as we speak. And Central was even, they had their share already. Last week, uh, the station was disinfected as well. So, um, and finally, how large is your sample taking? I know some suspects are locked there. Their families must have come to visit them and so on. So uh, are, you, are you opening the net wide to cover the, them in the testing uh, exercise? Yes. You know, this is a very, a very I mean, a wide uh, uh, jurisdiction that the late chief inspector covers. If you go, if you know Central Police Station Kofuria very well, it's just close to the Central uh, Market, where we have the place is densely populated. And this is a man who has been in front fighting the coronavirus, uh, especially with regard to uh, the president directive on social distancing and other uh, anti-COVID protocols. He's been fighting that already every day during his. Uh, Duty tour, he comes into contact with a lot of people. You understand? So it is important that uh, whether confirmed COVID or not, we do this exercise so that we will be free in our mind and how best we can contain the disease if it has been proven positive. So as a police command, uh, we are prepared to go all out to have all our personnel and those who might have come into contact with any police person. Because we are also frontline uh, workers so far as this COVID fight is concerned. So I think we are, we are on course and we are just doing that. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Sergeant uh, Francis Gomado. Uh, he is the regional police PRO in the Eastern Region. A 93-year-old man has become the 36th person to die from the coronavirus. Ghana's total COVID-19 cases is now at 7,881 with 2,841 recoveries. According to the Ghana Health Service, the old man had a history of hypertension and an underlying condition of prostate cancer and was admitted at a hospital in Accra with complaints of difficulty with breathing as well as cough. He was later diagnosed with COVID-19 after his samples were taken for testing on May 26. His death comes barely 24 hours after another death was recorded from the coronavirus. Ahafo is the only region out of the 16 yet to record a case of COVID-19. And very few children develop severe COVID-19 symptoms, even if they have underlying health conditions. Porsche Gabo in the following report tells the story of a healthcare worker whose family, including a nine-month-old baby girl, have contracted the coronavirus. Mommy, hello. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Sonia, not her real name, did not want any member of her family to be infected when she contracted COVID-19. Her worst fears were, however, confirmed when her nuclear family, including her nine-month-old baby girl, tested positive for the virus. It was worrying. I'm a health worker. My husband, too, is a health worker. We also go into the community as well, so we can't really tell where, yes. Initially, like going to work and coming back home, um, we were scared somehow because um, even if something will happen to me, not the kids, but eventually uh, they are part. Sonia is one of the over 80 healthcare workers in Ghana to have been infected with the virus in their line of duty. Yeah, so this is my team from Gahis Municipal Hospital, made of two pediatric nurses, Sandra Jete and then Cynthia Osei. And my pediatric nurses will attend to the two babies in there. So you can see you are all set for the tax. So we all air towards the patient room. Guys, 
Do you have anything to say? No. Are we ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. At a Saturday morning at the Ga East Municipal Hospital, a treatment center for COVID-19 and a team of healthcare workers in full protective gear are ready to attend to Sonia and her baby. We are here to do a general examination for the child. We check the vital signs. How is mother and baby? Sonia, fine. The feeding is not really like how it used to be. She takes a lot of breast milk. Oh, the fever is fine. The main symptoms of coronavirus in children include high fever, rash, loss of appetite, and a cough. Fortunately, the family, including the nine month old baby, is experiencing mild symptoms. I don't feel any symptoms. I'm fine. No fever, no cough. And so we are, we are just praying that um, it will be negative for us to go home. Were there any signs on the children that other parents should look out for? Yeah, fever. The fever, it was unusual very high like it could go like 40. Mm, that was the only serious thing especially children who cannot talk. After assessing the baby the pediatric nurses give medication for the rashes. Healthcare workers at the Ga East Municipal Hospital expressed their determination to provide child welfare services to those who have contracted the virus. Our baby is doing well. As of yesterday, she was spiking temperature a bit. So we intervened by giving uh, paracetamol and then we asked the mother to sponge us and when. The only challenge we are having now is her eating pattern. Mother says that it has changed and it is because she's not feeling well. We believe that the moment she recovers, she'll go back to her normal feeding. The experience is actually um, very similar to taking care of children with other conditions because the children we've had so far, they have been very stable. A child can move from being stable to seriously ill. So we assess them every day and make sure that they are stable. If there is any need for any other intervention like oxygen and other stuff, then we give it. But so far, all the children we've had since admission, they've all been stable. The World Health Organization advises women to breastfeed even when infected with the virus. She had an advice for mothers. They should be vigilant, like look out for things. And if they don't understand, they can go to the hospital or call the emergency numbers and check out. It could be COVID. Porsche Gabo, TV3 News, Accra. And being pregnant with COVID-19 could be depressing for expectant mothers. However, case management teams and treatment facilities across Ghana are doing everything possible to ensure that pregnant mothers who have contracted COVID-19 access antenatal delivery and postnatal services. It's a Saturday morning at the Ga East Municipal Hospital. Healthcare workers comprising midwives are ready to attend to two expectant mothers who have contracted COVID-19. I have the four midwives, Emilia Kolok, Priscilla Isifu, Priscilla Boachi, and then Edna Masua. So we have two pregnant women now. So they are going to take care of the pregnant women. Two midwives to one pregnant woman. UNICEF warns that although evidence suggests that pregnant mothers are not more affected by COVID-19 than others, countries need to ensure they still have access to antenatal, delivery and postnatal services. For the midwives attending to the expectant mothers who have contracted COVID-19, being infected does not mean antenatal services must come to a halt. Precaution is taken to minimize the risk of infection and exposure to the virus. For Grace and Mercy, being told they were pregnant was a joyous moment in their lives, but COVID set in, making them extremely anxious and fearing for the safety of the unborn children. At this point, I felt something else because, yeah. But when I came here and then everything is okay. If you're pregnant and you have it and you come, it's very good. And the, the nurses and the midwives will take good care of you. You'll be okay. Instead of sitting home and you don't know what to do and 
maybe be, before you come to the hospital to be more worse and but if you have the symptoms or anything earlier and you come here and they, they will just take good care of you and you'll be okay the midwives check for malaria Sorry. blood sugar level and urine of the expectant mothers i have for my four midwives here in order to be able to take care of them and do the focus antenatal care they are all around with everything set so do actually attend to the pregnant man whilst I stand and watch and observe the IPC practices so that we don't end up infecting them. For the expectant mothers here, hearing the heartbeat of the unborn children is proof that everything is all right. This is the heartbeat of the baby. My client says she's happy when she has the heartbeat of a baby. What name will you give to your child in the midst of COVID-19? <laughs> Oh, I don't know either it's a girl or a boy yet. Maybe if it's Ajua, 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 sanitizer. <laughs> Although pregnant women are classified as among the vulnerable patient population, a study by the Harvard University Education Block revealed that none of the babies of nine pregnant women who were infected with COVID-19 and had symptoms were affected by the virus. The virus was also not present in amniotic fluid, the baby's throat, or in breast milk. Currently, there's no evidence of any fetal malformations or effects due to maternal infection with COVID-19. And upon their examination, their babies are doing well. We have the FH, so we encourage them to continue their normal routine drafts. And we are here to take care of them. So if any challenge, we just attend to them promptly. It is my wish that they stay safe. They feel better, be in a very good condition throughout their pregnancy so that they'll have safe delivery, safe baby and safe mother. I feel proud and I'm very happy to be there to come and help people who need my care and my services. So always when I'm called upon to come and take care of pregnant women who have contracted this COVID-19, I am always happy to do this. We have a great team here and then everybody supports each other. And then when the COVID came, I took the opportunity to put myself in the team so that uh, I'll practice what I've learned in school. The mothers were grateful to the healthcare workers for not halting antenatal care services to them. They attend to me very good, so may God bless them and continue to do their works. With 116 million expectant births in approximately nine months of the COVID-19 pandemic, UNICEF is calling on government and donors to maintain life-saving emergency services for pregnant women and newborns. Being pregnant and having COVID-19 could be difficult times for expectant mothers. Healthcare workers here at the Ga East Municipal Hospital say they are committed to ensure Every pregnant woman who passes through this hospital with COVID-19 recovers from the Gai East Municipal Hospital for Shagabo TVP News. Osha couldn't disguise herself enough. I could see her rising that face mask. Now, contracting COVID-19 can induce considerable degree of fear worry and concern among the population. But clinical psychologists in Ghana are actively working on their response to COVID-19 by providing mental health care to persons who have been infected with the virus. Here's a report by Portia Gabo. At midday at the Great Accra Regional Hospital's Infectious Disease and Isolation Center, a team of clinical psychologists led by Anne Mensa Kufo are ready to assess their clients who have contracted COVID-19. The coronavirus pandemic has heightened stress and anxiety levels among populations the world over. Being infected with a virus could have an adverse impact on one's mental health care. Some persons who have tested positive for COVID-19 may have panic attacks and show signs of depression and helplessness. Using self-rating psychometric tools such as the self-reporting questionnaire, clients are assessed by evaluating their mental health state. So in a previous session, we had a test, um, the heart test. Um, it's a hospital anxiety um, depression test, as well as um, a subscale of the DAS, um, depression, anxiety, and stress scale. So I'm going to debrief him, uh, my client, on the test results 
and then we see our way forward. How are you doing? Okay, thank God. I want to tell you about the results of the test. I did a test. I realized that, and we uh, calculated and all that, and realized that your stress level is not as high as you thought. Her client, who has contracted COVID-19, spoke on the importance of mental health care in the recovery process. Someone is there to evaluate your, how to say, your health, mental health. I think it's very, very, very important. And then I feel, I mean, very, 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 very important. If they tend to be positive, then there, there could be feelings of devastation, why me, and all that, yes, going on within them. So, we look at all these things. Um, some people, um, when they come into the isolation center, um, they are used to their freedom. They are used to being out and about, going about their activities. So being in the isolation center, um, in, in a room for, over, for a long period of time, for days or weeks, it becomes a, a bit difficult for them. So it becomes stressful for them. So we look at, we try to um, identify some of these um, disorders that are going through their mind or happening to them, and then we see how to manage them. The Ghana Psychology Council, as part of its response to the COVID-19 fight, set up hotlines to provide psychosocial support to the public. Clinical psychologists have also been stationed at hospital facilities and treatment centers across the country, providing psychosocial support not only to persons who have contracted COVID-19, but also their relatives. So today what I'm going to do is to check up on you and find out how you've been holding up so far. Okay. What did you eat this morning? Are you comfortable with what you're being given? Yes. Okay. The key to recovering is a good mental state. Because um, as you know, the body is a complex organ, organ and it takes into place the mind, the body, and other aspects because they interact. If um, the mind doesn't give you any message, it's difficult for the body to respond. So if there is um, a good mental state, it's in part to respond to the physical treatment we provided by the doctors to help you recover. So I would say it is the mental state. Even after recovery, the role of psychologists does not end as clients may have to deal with post-traumatic stress disorder and even stigma. If they are in a good mind state, it helps them to respond to the treatment we given to them. So my role is to um, fish out for the dishes within them with respect to how they are um, being isolated because some of them are not used to being alone and if we do not take care it can accumulate into depression, anxiety and other psychological disorders. Clinical psychologists indeed play a vital role in helping persons who have contracted COVID-19 recover speedily. Prosha Gaboti with Three News, Accra. Still on COVID-19, Ghanaian seafarers are battling the stress of isolation vessel while their colleagues at home obviously do not make any income as the coronavirus pandemic rages on. Josephine Intrije in the following report shares the stories of two seafarers who are bearing the brunt of the crisis after a ban on crew change globally. Thousands of seafarers are stacked on vessels following the ban on travel and global lockdowns. Another directive by the International Maritime Organization, IMO, to hold crew change and new sign-offs to curtail the spread of the coronavirus, worsened the situation. Since then, seafarers at home cannot get on board vessels, while those already on board continue to work at sea for months. Due to the stressful nature of the job, marine workers are usually engaged for a few months. And at the end of their service, there is a crew change for a new set of mariners to get on board. But due to COVID-19, ships are getting to the ports all right, but seafarers are not allowed to get off. Here in Ghana, more than 100 seamen are trapped at sea. The mariner's job is sat down. 
So far as you are at home, you don't earn anything unless you're bored and working. What this literally means is that so long as you remain at home, you have to depend on your little savings. Engineer Teddy Mensah is a seafarer with more than 20 years experience. The job is a very tiring one. It's a very lonely one. You are secluded from your family for months on end. And stress and tension sets in as it were. Kwame Asemeni, another seafarer, has been working ashore. From what I have learned, people who are joining ship now will have to be quarantined for a time before they can join the vessel. On May 5, new guidelines which will ease crew change on vessels were introduced. However, port nations including Ghana are yet to comply leaving seamen to their faith. Josephine and GAJ, TV3 News. And let's come back on land now. Health workers at the Damfa Health Center in the Lankwantana Medina municipality lack personal protective equipment to aid them in healthcare delivery during COVID-19. Now, the facility is still using clinical thermometer instead of infrared thermometer, putting the lives of nurses and that of patients at risk. Since the outbreak of coronavirus in Ghana in March, one of the health facilities in Accra that has been struggling to get personal protective equipment is the Damfa Health Centre. Health workers there lamented they lack face masks, hand sanitizers, liquid soap, gowns, among others, to enable them to protect themselves and the patients who visit the centre. The workers say they were only given one reusable mask each. Disposable face masks are not available. As you can see me wearing, this is what we were provided with. You have to every day wash it, iron it and bring it to work. And usually we close very late from here to uh, home. Even you, you can't get sun to dry it, you have to iron it yourself, which is not even healthy for us. So we are pleading with them, if there is any support they can give it to us in terms of the PPEs, we'd be very grateful to them. Some say they have resorted to buying their own masks on a daily basis. We've taken it upon ourselves and we've, we've sewn ourselves. We have, a lot of people have bought their own material ones. Some also who are able to afford, they bought the disposable masks themselves and they, they are using it. At a normal circumstance, those are the triage and the OPD. At least they should have, I mean, overall, they should have face shield, they should have face masks. And at least they should have a boot as well, because they meet the client first. Even the hand sanitizer, it should contain a certain amount of glycerin. But the one we are having is just alcohol base. So the moment you pour it on your head, it quickly dries and you can't even perform the procedure that you need to perform using the hand sanitizer. Health workers are even more worried they are still using clinical thermometers. In this era of COVID, we've been putting it in everybody's armpit, which is not good. We had one, and they said the battery is low for about two weeks now. The clients are complaining. A woman complained about it. She said she came here two weeks. We said battery. Today, two battery. At the infrared thermometer, we also need one. The medical laboratory scientists say the center has recorded suspected cases. Last week there was a suspected case that came to the facility, but the person was tried at the entrance. So that was where the person was picked up, the sample was taken and then sent to Noguchi. The health workers are appealing to philanthropists organizations and other spirited individuals to come to their aid by providing them with PPEs. The Danfa Health Center is situated in Danfa, a community of more than 13,000 people in the La Nkwantanang Medina municipality in the greater Accra region. The center is accessed by residents of Danfa, Utinibi, Adutayman, New Adutayman, Kweyman, Ayimensa, Ghana flag, among others. 
Let's go to the Ashanti region where management of the Konfanoche Teaching Hospital in Kumase is requesting the urgent expansion of the psychiatric units. Doctors are compelled to see to patients on the corridor due to lack of space, compromising on confidentiality and their privacy. The psychiatric unit at the Konfo Anochi Teaching Hospital was established in 1981. It is the only referral unit within the northern belt of the country offering specialized mental care services and recorded 15,000 cases last year. The unit, with only 11 beds, five for males and six for females, but none for children, caters for about 100 patients daily. Children have to be admitted at the adults' ward in breach of the Mental Health Act. Adhering to physical distancing due to COVID-19 has worsened the situation. Patients must get the confidentiality to be able to tell us the full fledge of what is happening to them. We know how mental conditions and mental illness is stigmatized in the country. And so if they come to the place where they think they can get help and they are sitting in a place where they turn left and there is another patient there in a hearing distance, the possibility is that the patient may not tell you fully what is happening to them for you to be able to give the best of care that they need. Some doctors, however, consult from their offices, but patients sit outside in the full glare of other patients and visitors in breach of their privacy. Dr. Ruth Owusu Entry also disclosed the unit's pharmacy is unable to stock all the essential drugs. Our pharmacy is currently a kitchen of another pharmacy that we are just using. The place is so small that the three-star pharmacy unit can all not sit there at the same time. There is not even space to stock the full fledge of psychotherapy or pharmacotherapy or the different psychiatric medications that we would have used to care for our patient. It is becoming impossible to observe the physical distancing protocol following the increase in the number of patients. The number of patients coming here, and the number is large. Already, the space is very small. Patients, some of whom travel long distances, sometimes have to be turned back due to inadequate rooms. And 14 persons, including their nursing mother, have been arrested at Kwando Ziavi in the Volta region for their alleged affiliation to the secessionist group Homeland Study Group Foundation. The Saturday May 30 arrest was a joint military, national security and the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI. The suspects, who are between the ages of 24 and 60, have been handed over to the Volta Regional Police Command for further investigations. The operation was led by the 66th Artillery Regiment. The team souped on a meeting intended to discuss issues pertaining to the secessionist group. According to the security team, three patrol teams were detailed to the Pando municipality to verify the information leading to the arrest of the 14 people. Four other members at the meeting, however, managed to escape. Documents retrieved during the operation had details of intentions and an orchestrated plan on activities of the group. The Homeland Study Group Foundation has been campaigning for the succession of parts of the Volta, Oti, Northern, Northeast and Upper East regions of Ghana. The leader of the group, Charles Komi Kujoji, declared independence for the Western Togoland Territory on November 16, 2019. In other news, eight bodies have been retrieved after the Thursday boat disaster near Donkokrom in the Fram Plains North District of the Eastern Region. A rescue team made up of mostly fishermen from the area had retrieved four bodies on Friday and Saturday. The Kou of Fram Plains North District's NADMO director, David Inyaku, said the remaining five bodies retrieved by the same rescue team on Sunday, May 31. 
According to him, while three of the deceased have been sent to the Donkokrum Presbyterian Hospital, the remaining five have been released to their families. About 20 people were believed to have drowned after a boat they were travelling in capsized on the Volta Lake at Sukbe, a suburb of Donkokrum in the Afram Plains north district of the eastern region. The boat was said to be travelling across the lake from Zamani in the Esujaman district to Donkokrum when it capsized following a violent windstorm on Thursday, May 28. Now, the Minister for Works and Housing, Samuel Atamens At Atachia, has attributed the constant flooding of some major roads across the country to lack of coordination between agencies responsible for road and drainage construction. Touring some flood-prone roads in Accra, the minister said even though government is aware of such problems, there is no money to fix them anytime soon. Roads which flood anytime there is a downpour include Circle Kanishi through to Kaswa. Drivers have to make detours, park or risk driving through the flood waters. <laughs> After the rains, such roads develop deep holes, making driving through them very uncomfortable. When they were doing the road, they blocked it. So from that place to this place, the water comes to block here and has nowhere to go to. Oh, the road, the road uh, is, is spoiling our car. Me, as for me, I can't use that lane unless I use the middle lane before I come to Dansuma. In his response, the Minister of Works and Housing, Samuel Atachia, blamed the situation on lack of coordinating between the agencies responsible for road and drainage construction in the country. How the construction of this road um, did not have any regard to our hydro authorities who have a sense of flooding and the rest of it. So the road has been constructed and as a result of that, the proper uh, channels that should be constructed to ensure that when there's a downpour, we wouldn't have floods. These matters were not taken into account. He added it will cost government a lot to fix this challenge. This nation has myriads of activities that we need to have financial space to do. There's no way we'll be able to bring our drainage system to the point where it's subterranean and things will work as it ought. He cautioned motorists to avoid driving through flood waters. You are not in Noah's Ark for you to dare the floods. You are eventually, if you are not careful and your vehicle gets uh, subsided under the floods, the consequence will be death. The head of drainage at the Hydrological Service Department, said Kudoji, gave reasons for lack of cooperation between them and road contractors. In the past, we were not collaborating the agencies. For example, urban roads, highways, uh, hydro, AMA. That collaboration was not there. But we have all come to realize that it is necessary. This is the Dansuma Junction Road, and it's one of the main roads that gets flooded anytime it rains. It stretches all the way to Odokwa Junction. Unfortunately, the drivers would have to endure driving through such road conditions due to lack of funds, according to the Minister for Works and Housing. For the drivers, they want this road to be fixed as soon as possible. Joseph Armstrong Gold Alibi, TV3, Dan Soman, Accra. Hundreds displaced, property destroyed, and the debris unattended to for days, weeks, months, and even years. Eben Ejikumbuatin, in the following report, has been finding out whose responsibility it is to clear the mess. The rains have started, and GNET has predicted above normal rainfall this year. The issue is not about the rains, but the precision, during and aftermath. Property is destroyed and the debris are unattended to for days, weeks, months, and sometimes years. Stop, stop, stop! The N1 highway extension from Old Wager Barrier to the Kaswato Road is a good example. Silt from the hills wash onto the highway along the Old Wager Barrier to the Kaswato Road. It has been same after every downpour. This is the Trinity Avenue and the Labaoleshi Road traffic light. This billboard fell damaging one of the traffic lights during the Thursday, May 28 downpour. But whose responsibility is it to assess the situation and ensure the debris is cleared before an obvious preventable accident? 
Eben Ajekumbuati in TV3, Accra. Now, a former member of parliament for Brikum, Captain Krabia Fadate, retired, says many former MPs are wallowing in poverty, partly because of the responsibilities they took upon themselves. Some former MPs recently wrote to the Auditor General to pay the arrears owed them by the state. The former Interior and Local Government Minister was speaking with Alfredo Kansi in a yet-to-be-aired interview. What's the situation with your other colleague MPs who are out of parliament now? Do you know? The way I see them in town uh, is, is not good. It's not good. And I have, let me repeat, especially those who are not professionals. Like, uh, excuse me to say, if you go to parliament as a teacher, a trained teacher, uh, for eight years you don't step in the classroom, or for four years you don't step in the classroom, and you are relying only on your salary as an MP. If the president makes you a minister or deputy minister, maybe you get some small, small allowances. But when all these are cut off, uh, you have a problem. So if it's that bad, why do people spend so much money to get into parliament? They don't know. They do not know. Apart from the glamour, what else? And then they will see you riding past in some the Toyota Land Cruiser or Nissan Patrol. Those days, I was giving a brand a loan, a loan to buy a Land Cruiser. There was one day I attended eight funerals, eight in a day, in one day. When I lost uh, Brukum, a friend of mine, a lawyer, he met me in court and he said, Ah, Capito, do you know why he lost? You didn't spend money. So you weren't spending enough money. You are not spending enough. And people went to microfinance companies and borrowed huge sums of money. And because, because these delegates, it is their cocoa season. So the, you'll hear the full version of that interview on 3FM 92.7 on Tuesday, 2nd June at 8 a.m. Don't miss that. You're watching News 360. We'll return with some more stories. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. An organization and some philanthropists have come to the aid of five-month-old Covenant Alokatu who requires financial assistance to undergo surgery to correct his facial deformity. Well, viewers are warned that pictures coming up could be disturbing. On Saturday, May 23, TV3 Mission telecast the story of five-month-old Covenant Alokatu, who is in dire need of support to correct his deformity. Due to his condition, his parents had difficulty taking him outside to see relatives and friends as they faced being stigmatized. Covenant had to undergo a stage procedure at the National Reconstructive Surgery and Burns Center of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. I found out that my son is like this. Me myself, I don't know what to say, and even the people that are around me, I don't even know what to tell my mother or my family. The only thing I, I tell them was, I don't know what I have done so that I would deserve uh, this kind of thing. And even though that day cried, I don't even know what to tell my mother about my son. They ask me, why is your, and if somebody meets me, oh, I want to see your son. The only thing I'll tell the person is he's asleep. The mission team was at the National Reconstructive Surgery and Burns Center of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital together with Convenant and his mother. Eagle Petroleum presented a check for 10,000 Ghana cities for the surgery. On behalf of Eagle Petroleum, of which I am an ambassador, we present to you 10,000 cities for the surgery of the small boy. My boss saw the story on TV3 and called me to come and make sure that the writing is done. So we pray and hope that by the grace of God, doctors and nurses who are going to work on him will bring back the smiles that we are all waiting for. So from Eagle Petroleum, it's an amount of 10,000 cities supporting the surgery of the small boy. 
Later, TV3's mission team also presented checks from some philanthropists for Covenant's surgery. Doctors say surgery for the five-month-old will begin soon. On behalf of the management of plastic surgery, uh, HOD, and uh, we want to say a very big thank you. And on behalf of this child, because it's not all people who do that. So this kind of gesture is going to go a long way to put a big smile on the parent's face and then brighten the future of the child. Covenant's mother was grateful for the gesture. The only thing I have not tell everybody is God bless them. Even though here that I am now, I can't even do anything to appreciate them. The only thing I have not saved. God bless them. I thank them, Auntie Portia, I thank everybody who have supported me in this. TV3 Mission will follow up on Covenant's progress and update viewers. And thank you to all those who donated. And as it for Mission, Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Thank you so much for watching. Hello, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Juliet Bewa. Now, Ghanaian football legend Abedi Ayupele in a rare interview paid homage to some of the people who helped him in his career. He was speaking on stage broadcaster GTV Sports Plus. Not one to readily get in front of the camera. The interview was a fitting tribute to a man who defied many odds to attain global status. While on the show, Abedi was joined by the man who nurtured him at lower tier side Great Farkos, Herbert Adika, who recounted his time with Abedi in an emotional tribute that got the maestro to shed some tears on live television. I find it very difficult to describe the type of player he was. And he has proved himself so well that at no given time will I say anything I didn't like about him. He was really a good player. He was obedient. The, the, the good accolades I can give him. Yeah. He was a really a player who obeyed instructions. And that made him what he is today. Short of voice. I see him often. He comes to the house. He comes to the training grounds to see me. And I'm always very happy to see him. So. What happened here? It was a big surprise. A normal surprise, yeah. Aware of the support he enjoyed, Abedi heaped praises on some of the people who helped him in his career, including his friend and former colleague Abu Imoru, saying their relationship was so special they looked out for each other across many career adventures. There are a lot of people who really made me who I am. Yeah. But you know, it's it was gradual process. Okay. And the there were a lot of them who are not alive today. Okay. And I'm taking this particular day to remember all of them because when most of them passed away, I wasn't in the country. Okay. Therefore when I came I went to see the families and you know, paid my condolences. Abedi remains one of Ghana's biggest football exports, an achievement that has opened many doors for today's shining stars. The legacy lives on.